Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. Please be seated. shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. When the Assyrian comes into our land and treads in our palaces, then we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight princes of men. They shall shepherd the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod at its entrances. And he shall deliver us from the Assyrian when he comes into our land and treads within our borders. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our 
gospel reading this evening from John chapter 1. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thank you, God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, in the Gospel lesson for this evening from John chapter 1, Nathaniel is shocked to hear that the Messiah is from the town of Nazareth. Now, imagine, after our other two weeks, imagine what Nathaniel might have said if he found out that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Because Bethlehem, like Nazareth, is not where you go looking for the Messiah. These are not the big name towns with big name schools, the big name teachers. You go to Bethlehem looking to get away, to avoid the people who might judge you. You go there because you have nowhere else to go. But it's not just Nathaniel that holds these assumptions. It's everyone else as well. Everyone knows that if you want someone qualified, if you want someone who's going to be good, well, you go to these certain places where such people have come from before. Consider Supreme Court justices. Uh, the nine Supreme Court justices we, we have now, they all come from Ivy League schools. And it's not just the current nine, the previous nine also went to the same Ivy League schools. So, what does this mean? It means if you want to be on the Supreme Court, it really helps if you go to one of these Ivy League schools. And it's the same thing with sports. Certain schools are well known for producing great athletes. They have all these trophies and titles that they try to lure these great athletes to come to their school and play. So if you're a baseball player and you're really good, most baseball players prefer schools in the South. Football players, well, you go to a school in the Midwest. Basketball players. Basketball players usually go to schools on the coasts. So if you want to be a professional in any of these sports, you'd probably be looking into the schools where they have the trophies, where they've got the programs, where they've got the teams, where they've got the coaches. 
And now if you're living in Bible times, and you're looking for a king or a general to be your proven leader, where would you look? Not Nazareth, not Bethlehem. You'd probably go to Jerusalem. That's where the great kings are at. And Judah could really use a proven general or some other great leader who could come and lead the people to victory or at very least safety and security. The 8th century BC was a dark time in Judah. Remember these names? Tiglath Pileser III of Assyria had just captured, destroyed, and led into exile much of the northern kingdom of Israel. That was the prophesied uh, destruction, punishment that the Lord delivered upon the disobedient and idolatrous northern kingdom. And it certainly looks like the southern kingdom of Judah would be the next to fall. Shalmaneser V and Sargon II had finished off the job that Tiglath Pileser started. They captured and destroyed the capital of Israel and Samaria. Now the Assyrians, what they're known for is for moving people around. So no sooner is the northern kingdom of Israel exiled out of Israel than some other foreign nation that's also been conquered is exiled into Israel. And at the time of Jesus, these people are known as Samaritans. People have been moved into the country of Samaria because that northern kingdom never returned. But sitting and watching all these events is Judah and Jerusalem in the south, those who were trying to be faithful to God. And so they're asking themselves, well, what is next? And yes, the kings of Assyria are looking to the south to keep marching south, to keep conquering to the south, to go into Judah, to go into Jerusalem. But the Lord had other plans. He delivered his people at the last minute, surrounding the city with angels and sending the Assyrians away in terror. But not some earthly king, general, or judge like Gideon or Samson who saved Judah. But the Lord defeated the enemy of his people by sending the angel of death. But what about next time? For surely there will be a next time. You know the feeling. Problems are all around you, and you need someone to save you, so where do you look? If it's financial problems, maybe spending a couple of bucks on the lottery might get you out of your tight spot. Or if it's a relationship problem, maybe you go looking on the internet, looking for some quick fix. If it's work problems, maybe you're looking for your next job. If the country is in trouble, if the economy is in bad, well, surely the next person elected to hold office will solve all our problems. Where do you find the answer to your problems? While some people may be looking for their answers in quick fixes, others look for answers in the bottom of a bottle, in a drug, some other means, some other distraction that makes their world disappear for a few hours. But for our problems, we want big, we want speedy, we want miraculous solutions. And where would you never think to look for an answer to your problems? Where do you assume the answer would never lie? Is it back with him? So often we look into the world for the world to come and save us, to be an answer to our problems, and we forget about Jesus Christ, the one who came to deliver us from our sins. And it's our sins that really lead us into all the other problems we're experiencing in life. We trust in ourselves when we need to be looking to God for help and answers. So like the people of Judah, who today hear that the answer to their problems is found in the little town of Bethlehem, Ephrata, where one would be born who will deliver his people from their enemies, who will be their leader. So today, do you hear the words that from Bethlehem, 
comes the one who will also save you, deliver you from all that causes you stress and heartache and concern. Can anything good come out of Bethlehem? Yes, but apparently not very quickly, because Judah had to wait a while. Actually, Judah had to wait a very long while, because that northern kingdom was defeated in 722 BC. Christ wouldn't be born until over 700 years later. And in that time, the southern kingdom also fell to the kingdom of Babylon, was sent away into exile, then returned from exile, then rebuilt the city of Jerusalem, then rebuilt God's temple, and then waited for many more years. That whole time, they're waiting for the Savior who would come and rescue them. They probably feel like the southern kingdom did, waiting for the Savior who will rescue you from everything that causes you pain, wondering why is it taking so long, causing you to look for a Savior in all the places he has not promised to be. And yet the Savior has come and is now here. And just like always, he's in the places where we would least expect to find him, where, where we know he should be, where he's promised to be, and yet we don't look for him there. In the Word, and in the water, and the bread, and in the wine. He's in this house that was built for God's people to give him worship and praise. Here is your Savior. He's come for you to offer you comfort from your afflictions, rest from your enemies, peace in the midst of your trials and tribulations. He's come promising that he will deliver you from all that causes you to stumble while here on earth. Your enemies will be vanquished. Your concerns will be wiped clean. Your heartaches will be mended and made whole because your sin is removed and paid for by Christ. Look to Bethlehem, that lowly, unsuspecting place where nothing good ever comes from. But God proceeds from there. Coming to church is not just something we should do, but it's where God comes to us to give us peace and forgiveness and hope. Reading and studying the Word of God is not a chore, but it's God speaking His Word of law and gospel into our lives to convict us and comfort us. See that light shining in the midst of the darkness drear? Christ is near. Christ is, in fact, here. Here in Bethlehem is your eternal peace and hope. Amen. That may the peace that passes on our human understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Please stand. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice.
be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you remembered our greatest need by fulfilling your promise to send us Lord's Son. He died and rose to deliver us from all sin, death, and the power of the devil. Comfort us with the preaching of the gospel, and fill us with the unshakable hope in your precious promises that will always succeed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us your service that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.